Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it cold outside? Okay. I think a few days ago, we met the snow falling from the sky. It seems the nature tells now it's winter. As I grow up and become an adult, I felt I have various benefits from the society. For example, I have the right to purchase uh, cigarettes if I want, even though I don't smoke. <laughs> anyway, I can do it because I'm an adult. A few days ago, who did you vote for, for president? Okay. Okay. Almost everybody are adults. Yeah. So we ch- we can choose our president. So in some sense, we have some power because we are an adult. When we are like a ch- child, we do not have that power. Now we have the power from the society. So I thought I got lots of merits as being an adult. How exciting. Mike, you will be an adult soon. <laughs> okay. However, gradually I felt that I was losing something important. I felt something missing. So I thought about it over and over. I looked back. When I was young, many people around me gave me a good advice. and kindly told me to the right path if I did something wrong. Many helped me. They stopped to give me suggestions and advice because I was an adult. So I found that I lost really important thing in my life. I lost my teachers. Here almost everybody are adults. I think except two guys. So how many teachers do you have? How many teachers? Many? Great. If we don't have many teachers, this is a sad story in our lives. So I need teachers. I really need teachers who tell me the truth about the life and who guide me to the good path in my life. So as I keep in, as I keep practicing the Dharma path, now I found I discovered many teachers. So now I'd like to introduce you my teachers. So I don't remember who exactly told me how to walk when I was a baby. Probably. my parents did. So they are my first walking meditation teachers. As I learned English as a second language, many people became teachers. Like some told me grammar, some told, told me pronunciation. Still I'm learning practicing pronunciation. 
some writing. So I met many teachers for English, for learning English. How about my yoga teachers? Right now, the Karen teaches me uh, chair yoga. And Reverend Kyung Kim, a Korean monk, Jung Jung Sunim, even Rodney Yi, he told me yoga by his DVD and his books. Yeah, I still see him from time to time by DVD. My Tai Chi teachers, my Qigong teachers, my chanting meditation teachers, sitting meditation teachers, my computer teachers, and most of all, my Dharma teachers. So I have to introduce you, I think, more than 100 teachers now. So I have categorized my teachers in three groups. The first group is, good is my teacher. Good is my teacher. If I see something good, it becomes my teacher. If I witness someone's good behavior, his or her action becomes my teacher's. I try to resemble and copy them and kind of observe their power of goodness. So good becomes my teacher. In this sense, I think we have many good teachers around us. However, we do not always see good as our teachers. Why do we not see good as teachers? I think because we have the two most common emotions. Two emotions. So we do not see good as teacher in general. They are jealous and envy. They may work negatively when we see good. It means that our eyes are covered by the jealous spirits. I experienced this situation many times when I saw my close friend doing good. Instead of seeing good as a teacher, the envy feeling came up from my heart and it made me uncomfortable. At the moment, I was comparing mine from my friend's goodness. So I couldn't accept this goodness as my teacher. Even I tried to devalue their goodness. These base emotions, jealous and envy, sometimes they deceive us. At the moment, we lose our teachers. If we lose our teachers, it is a sad story in our lives. So please don't deceive yourselves by jealousy and envy. Then there are millions of teachers around us. There, uh, there is another type of teachers. I teach some students, especially not right now, some moving meditation I teach. They are my teachers. Why? Because they make me study a lot in order to prepare the class. In fact, they don't tell anything and they don't push me study and practice hard. Nobody did. Nobody does. Just I do because of 
my students. So they make me study. And even they, in some sense, they don't allow me any chance to be lazy. So they are my great teachers. In addition, when I teach them, they ask many questions. Some of them were the really new things to me. I couldn't think about those questions in their ways. So the questions are challenging me each and every moment. And it makes me fresh each and every moment. So they are my teachers. After the class, they tell me, thank you, thank you, Reverend Joe. Thank you is mine to say to you, my student. Because you are my teachers. Right now, I'm talking about my practice and I'm introducing you, my teachers. So at this moment, You are my teachers. Now the third group. The third group that um, bad is my teacher. Bad is my teacher. It's somewhat irony or awkward. I know that. This is a really difficult part. How could it be possible to make bad a teacher? In general, bad makes us uncomfortable. It leads us to be gloomy, angry, anxious, nervous, or mad. So bad makes something bad. If we mix blue paint with red paint, the paint becomes purple in color. Just like this. Imagine we are like blue paint. We are like blue paint. And bad, bad is red paint. As we experience bad red paint, again and again, we happen to make ourselves purple. by mixing us with a red color or bad. So it's hard to embrace bad as our teacher. We, th- we can think about think this situation in a different aspect, in a positive way. This bad gives us a Special lesson, very special lesson. From this, we naturally learn what we should not do. If we see bad, we feel bad. So we know it's bad, not good. Simply speaking, from bad, we learn don'ts out of do and don'ts in our lives. Just we feel bad and we know it, so naturally we learn. So it's a special lesson. Now, from my experience, someone whom I know just called me and asked several questions. What that person wants to know and requested me to do what that person, again, wants wants me to do, even at night. He just calls me. So I, in my case, probably, ah, this is an urgent phone call. So I pick up the phone and it happens again. 
So someone, I'm hooked again. For the first time, during and after the call, I was unhappy with this type of treatment to me. So now, when I make a phone call to others, I think whether or not I'm selfish with this phone call. This unhappy experience gave me a special lesson about the phone call etiquette. And but this gives one more lesson. The feeling of unhappiness is the very chance to learn Buddha's great compassion and love. This person needs to learn being more skillful. We can pray for that person. Or we can help the person to be more skillful. So we can use our compassion and love at the moment. Or we can cultivate compassion and love at the moment. So that's why it's a special lesson. However, even though bad becomes a teacher, if we are not ready for embracing it as our teachers, the bad makes us bad, or the bad makes us worse. In other words, our mind is painted by the color of bad. So if you think that you are not strong enough against some situation, you don't need to pretend you are brave. Just one step back from it. I think this is a wise and skillful action at the moment. I introduced you many teachers from my practice. All the good and bad are teachers. And even my students become my teachers. They depend on us. I mean, we can make all of them our precious teachers. So in the long run, Everything, everyone, and every moment become our great teachers. Now I have two questions. Then, how many teachers do I have? How many teachers do I have? One. One teacher? Okay. Good. The second question now, okay. Okay, I have two questions. The second question, okay. How many teachers, how many teachers do you have? How many teachers do you have? If you have many teachers, and you see your teachers each and every moment, then it tells you are like every moment progressed in spiritual journey. I hope you meet lots of teachers in your life around us, very next to you. Okay, today I talked about my teachers. In fact, this is what I am practicing for item number seven in the essential dharmas of daily practice. Number seven, here. The essential dharmas of daily practice number seven. Let us turn a reluctance to learn into a willingness to learn well. I'm practicing this one. Today, just I 
shared my practice about item number seven. Just one simple sentence. How many teachers do you have? Please keep this question and ask yourself from time to time. That means you are practicing this number seven. Thank you.